Welcome to the Big Picture Film Club. My guest today is Laura Turner, screenwriter of the thriller Lapwing, which is available now on VOD and select cinemas. Set in 1555, the film follows a woman named Patience from an isolated rural community who struggles with her controlling brother-in-law and leader, David, who is gradually unraveling after the failure of his idyllic community. Let's take a quick look at the film. It's all right. You shouldn't have done that. I should have stopped him. She's coming with us! There's something about you, Patience. He can't control you. Don't do anything silly, Patience. Go! Back to your people! And it makes him sick. Drives him mad. Maybe it would drive any man mad. I'm back with screenwriter Laura Turner. Um, Laura, how are you doing? Hi, yeah, really well, thank you. Um, it's been it's been a very exciting kind of couple of weeks um, with releasing the film, starting to put it out there to audiences. Um, and we've been really fortunate um, that we've had lots of kind of in-person Q&A events at various cinemas across the UK so far, and we've got more coming up. Um, which has just been so lovely to kind of get to meet some of the audiences who are watching the film, get to chat to them about their responses. Mm. Um, and also for us to kind of, you know, get to grips a little bit with the questions that people are asking and the things that people want to know a little bit more about, you know, kind of where did this particular thing come from or um, what was the idea behind this thing has been really, really fascinating for us as filmmakers. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, but um, a very enjoyable one. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's, um, you know, actually a point I wanted to start on with was, you know, this film is set in uh, 1555 and in the intro we get um, a, a spiel about the Egyptians Act um, and that in some ways plays as an anchor to the, the, the story that sort of plays out. And so can you explain what is or was the Egyptians Act? Absolutely, yeah. And I think it's a really interesting one because it's very much something that, you know, I love my history and the Tudor and Elizabethan period in particular is is something that, you know, I've always been really drawn to. I've always been really interested in all kind of elements of the socio-political context of that time. But I never come across um, the Egyptians Act. Um, and it was really when I was doing a little bit of initial research um, into the world, into kind of what was happening in the country at this time um, because Lapwing kind of the journey I guess or the genesis of Lapwing was that it started life as a short film mm. and then the decision was made between myself and Phil the director that we were going to turn it into a feature which obviously meant expanding the world and looking at the bigger picture so I was doing this research and just kind of really stumbled across the Egyptians Act if I'm honest it was something as I say it wasn't something that I was kind of particularly sort of looking out for um, it was just it was very briefly mentioned in something and I thought that's really interesting that's not something that I've kind of come across before um, and as I then sort of you know dug into that did more research and basically discovered that it was essentially the first kind of anti-immigration legislation that was passed in the UK um, so it basically used the term Egyptian as a very kind of broad catch-all term for mm. anybody who kind of not of native English descent um, and it outlawed them from being in the country and basically gave them three months from the passing of the law um, to get out of the country safely after which time they would be liable for the death penalty and also anybody of seeming English descent who was found in company with anyone who was uh, seemingly of Egyptian descent as, as was the kind of the terms were quite interchangeable between Egyptian and Egyptian. Mm. Um, anyone found in company with, with, with an Egyptian or Egyptian was, was also liable to the death penalty, um, which I just found so shocking that, you know, that's not something that, that I would say broadly we know about. And, you know, most yeah. people that I've 
chatted, I've chatted to about the film haven't been aware of this and have kind of, you know, gone away afterwards and, and done the sort of research that I was doing and, and kind of gone, you know, this is this is incredible that we aren't taught about this. Um, and it was actually in terms of the East Midlands, which is where I'm from and it's where the film is set. Um, that was one of the areas in the UK or in England, as it was at the time, it was an English legislation where this death penalty was actually carried out the most in, in sort of the counties around the East Midlands. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I just found that fascinating that that's a kind of you know, very buried element of our history. And it was also a very brief moment in time as well. You know, it was Queen Mary who passed that legislation. She wasn't on the throne for long and it was revoked afterwards. Um, so it was just a very interesting and, and, and a really potent time that felt like it offered a lot in terms of the stakes of the story for these characters. Yeah, and, and so now we have the sort of, I guess, thank you for that, the sort of backdrop in, in what world this takes place uh, who is patience like how did you write that character and what were your visions for her uh, as a person it's really interesting I mean I um so in all of my work as um a writer I'm always really interested in in the female experience and the female voice um, in particular. And actually something that I knew quite early on with the character of Patience was that she she didn't speak and that she was mute. Um, and I made the decision that she was actually kind of selectively mute because she has a stammer, she has a speech impediment. And in this kind of very closed and very toxic community that she lives in, she has experienced so much hatred and abuse because of her speech impediment that she basically decides right that's it I'm just I'm not going to speak if you're if you're going to treat me this way if you're going to treat me like an animal then I just won't give I won't give you the ability to be able to do that so I will be silent so mm -hmm. it's a really interesting kind of um paradox I suppose in that you know we uh, I as well you know very much kind of associate power with the ability to express myself and the ability you know for me again for me as a writer the ability to be able to tell my stories is something that I find empowering um, but actually what's really interesting with Patience um, and was amazing to explore with Phil the director and Hannah Douglas who plays Patience in the film mm. is that actually there's a real sense of empowerment that comes from her choice not to speak particularly because David, her brother-in-law, who's this kind of very tyrannical leader of this small band of salt farmers that she's part of, um, living almost in complete isolation from the rest of the world on the Lincolnshire coastline. He, he wants desperately to get a rise out of her nearly all the time. He's always kind of trying to provoke her, trying to push her to a point where she loses control and she snaps. Um, and then he can humiliate her and and you know bring her bring her down essentially. Yeah. Um, and actually, the journey for patience is about going. No, I'm not going to let you do that to me. Um, I know my worth. I know that I have um, something to say, and actually, I'll find other ways of saying it. Um, so it was a really interesting exploration with patience to you know for me. I think she's she's obviously a silent character, but she's she's the most potent and in many ways the most powerful um, and the most active character in the whole piece she's not she's not reactive at all she makes yeah. her own choices and she takes her own path however hard that is and it becomes increasingly difficult as David feels that he's losing um, losing sway over her and she's kind of um, stepping out on her own that becomes increasingly hard for her but it never deters her um, and, and so in terms of like your research um, into sort of formulating the world, Patience, uh, was Patience sort of based on anyone from the time period or even a composite of people? Or was it simply, you know, how would a person potentially exist in this world? And you, you're sort of just making Patience up as, if you, you know, if you use that term. Yeah, absolutely. Um it's, it's really interesting. I think um, I sort of was remembering myself the other day, actually, that the idea for Lapwing itself as the whole concept actually started with patience. It started with this image of a young woman in Tudor Elizabethan dress 
on a beach covered in blood um so quite it was quite a stark image um and i i just felt this real sense that i knew very clearly who she was um and so elements of the rest of the story really kind of came into play around this idea of this young woman um <clears throat> excuse me living at this time working and living in a very isolated and a very bleak but very beautiful part of the world where she didn't have access to um things beyond the horizon that was immediately presented to her you know there's yes. a lot of imagery in lapwing and a lot of metaphor about um the the containment of being able to see your horizons however far away they are but also the freedom that that kind of represents if you can it, take charge of that moment and if you can kind of spread your wings um so patience was really the kind of the start of everything to do with lapwing and then from that point onwards i sort of built the other characters around her um mm. so i always know i always knew that there was a character like david it took me a little while to kind of formulate exactly what the sort of interpersonal relationships between the characters would be like but i always knew there was a, a, a deeply misogynistic oppressive force in her life um, and then as I began to introduce other characters such as Rumi, it became really clear to me that he was not only misogynistic, but he was, you know, xenophobic and he was, um, he kind of exemplified all, um, all kind of elements of bigotry um, really were crystallised in his character. Um, but I think, you know, the other really important character in the piece is Lizzie, um, who's Patience's sister. She's her older sister. She's mm. the one that's actually married to David. And she undergoes a really interesting journey and story as well. Um, you know, she is absolutely an abuse victim as much as patient says, you know, of both physical and, and maybe even more so for Lizzie, it's about emotional abuse and coercive control. It's about the very dangerous dark power that David has over her. And actually it's about the, the sisterhood between those two women that mm. enables them both to go on this journey. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of really interesting because there are elements of love story in Lapwing, but very much not just about a romantic relationship. You know, there is a romantic connection between Patience and Rumi, who's this young Egyptian man that she meets, who's trying to escape the country. But m I think more pertinently, it's about the love story between two sisters. Mm. And it's about the way that, you know, they start very, very close. And then the things that happen to them in this isolated world almost tear them apart but they never actually allow that to happen um so yeah so it's, it's really interesting patience was always at the heart of things and and as i say there really was that kind of quite stark image of her um which yeah kind of obviously made me made me understand immediately that what i was writing here was something quite a lot darker than some of the things that i'd written previously something that really was about kind of going to places that felt a little bit scary and a little bit unnerving um but i think that's important for us as creatives to do hmm. and for us to share that with audiences and, and you said like your, your first sort of vision of patience was you know um uh, in a beach um in a dress like bloodied and you know at times it feels that the film does go well it does go to some really you know dark places and uh, i guess in sort of writing how did you decide like how far down the rabbit hole if you will to go to go down in terms of how graphic would it be and where to just sort of tame it or let the story not be, be told in a different way or be more suggestive uh, how did you sort of kind of uh, go between those thoughts mm, absolutely really interesting yeah and i think it was very much um a big part of that was about the conversation between myself and phil the director about finding the moments where it felt essential that we were showing some of that yeah. horrific violence that um patience and lizzie and rumi and you know some of the other characters in the piece yeah that they were experiencing on a on a daily basis and i think part of that is about being you know being respectful to the fact that this is this is a you know yes this is a story and these are characters that i've made up but they are very much based on true emotions true experiences of things that happen to people when 
they are in these awful abusive situations and mm. I think there was an element of we never wanted to use that gratuitously um you know it was always about choosing our moments very very carefully to just push the audience a little bit further than than might kind of automatically make them comfortable um but I think actually for me some of the moments where that works um in a really interesting way is when we actually see less but feel more um yeah. so for example there as the as the story goes on there are some really truly horrific things that happen to patients um that actually are filmed and um, kind of presented to the audience quite differently from some of the bloodier violence as it were that happens early on in the piece um because it was all about um the female experience of those moments you know there's a lot of moments that are ex like where the camera is extremely intimate with um hannah who plays patience you know it's it's the camera is right there right in her face as you know really quite awful things are happening to her um and we're not necessarily seeing the awful thing happen but mm. what we're seeing her reaction to it we're seeing the pain we're seeing the trauma and actually for me that was the most important thing you know it wasn't about necessarily showing audiences something that that they don't they don't need to see because I think the thing that we we don't see on screen enough is the intimacy of how that really feels for a human being mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of you know as uncomfortable as I always knew that would make a lot of people feel that was always what I wanted to do with those moments um, and I'm you know just so grateful to work with um, Phil and also Stuart our cinematographer who who really kind of lent into that and I think captured those moments with um, a real intensity that was I mean you know some some really hard content in there as well for Hannah who plays Patience and, and Emmett Scanlon who plays David you know some really dark places that they they both have to go to um in the piece but I think you know for me it was about finding a real balance between the the physicalization of the violence and yeah. also the emotional interpretation of that um and just like finally um how has it been working with uh, Philip Stevens, the director, and sort of particularly from the, the concept stage of the short film to now to having these sort of different key moments of this film? And how have you sort of brought out the best in each other? It's been, yeah, that's really, really interesting. It's been um, such a brilliant kind of collaboration from from the very start. You know, we were already working together um, on various short film projects when the kind of the start of Lapwing really began. Mm. Um, and I think it was, you know, we'd also worked together in theatre. So I think we've got a real understanding of each other's kind of creative process. We've got a real shorthand in terms of ideas and how we bring those to life. And I think the most important thing, you know, for me is that there's a real, there's so many shared interests for us as well. You know, we are both fascinated by the same elements of our kind of shared histories. You know, we're both mm. really interested in the idea that was obviously always at the heart of Lapwing, which is about exploring the present through the lens of the past. You know, I, I think hopefully one of the things that audiences have really felt when they've watched the film is how shocking it is that, you know, we're seeing something that's set 500 years ago, but actually mm. it, it kind of raises the questions of how much has changed today. Um, but also, you know, we're both very, very interested in um, something that is experiential, which again, I think, you know, comes back to that question about the violence and how do you choose to bring that to life? Um, so, you know, for me, as well as a female writer, I think I felt, <clears throat> I've always felt very, very safe in um, the collaboration with Phil. I feel that, you know, we have a real kind of um, mutual standing point that we feel about different elements of the filmic process that mm -hmm. enable us to just kind of go on that journey together, really. Um, and, you know, he's fantastic at story and, you know, we riff, e riff off each other a lot, which is, which is just brilliant. And, you know, it's so it's been so nice as well, kind of, you know, now going into the sort of the bit where we're sort of, you know, reaching out and talking to people about the film and meeting audiences and doing yeah. Q and A's as a ensemble. You know, he um he's a bit of a force of nature really. He really kind of holds <laughs> the holds the whole thing together, which is just a joy to be around. So it's yeah, it's been fantastic. And you know, we're we're working on several projects um now and kind of gearing up for the next one. So it's a very exciting time. 
Well, Laura, thank you very much for your time today. And uh, yes, um, Lapwing is available now uh, on VOD platforms. Or you know, just Google Lapwing and download it. Or if you're in the UK, uh, get yourself down to a screening. Um, but yeah, Laura, thank you very much for your time. And uh, Lapwing is an amazing film, an amazing achievement as well in how the films come about. So thank you very much for sharing that. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right.